Hi, this is Margo. This is Thursday, June the 6th, 2019, 6.40 p.m. Pacific Time, United States of America. We're going to be looking at earthquakes tonight, as we do every night. But I've got a couple of articles of interest to share with you first. First one came out today, or yesterday, June the 5th, from... WorldNewsDailyReport.com is entitled Smithsonian Admits to Destruction of Thousands of Giant Human Skeletons in the Early 1900s. <clears throat> Here's a picture. A U.S. Supreme Court ruling has forced the Smithsonian Institution to release classified papers dating from the early 1900s that proves the organization was involved in a major historical cover-up. The cover-up allegedly destroyed evidence showing giant human remains in the tens of thousands had been uncovered all across America. So there were giants living here. The pieces of evidence were ordered to be destroyed by high-level administrators to protect the mainstream chronology of human evolution at the time, according to the court ruling. The allegations stemming from the American Institution of Alternative Archaeology, or the AIAA, that the Smithsonian Institution had destroyed thousands of giant human remains during the early 1900s was not taken lightly by the Smithsonian who responded by suing the organization for defamation and trying to damage the reputation of the 168 year old institution. During the court case new elements were brought to light as several Smithsonian whistleblowers admitted to the existence of documents that allegedly proved the destruction of tens of thousands of human skeletons reaching from 6 feet and 12 feet in height, between 6 feet and 12 feet in height, a reality mainstream archaeology cannot admit to for different reasons, claims AIAA spokesman James Churchward. <clears throat> Here's a quote. There has been a major cover-up by Western archaeological institutions since the early 1900s to make us believe that America was first colonized by Asian peoples migrating through the Bering Strait 15,000 years ago, when, in fact, there are hundreds of thousands of burial mounds all over America with the na which the natives claim were there a long time before them and that show traces of a highly developed civilization, complex use of metal alloy alloys, and where giant human skeleton remains are frequently found but still go unreported in the media and news outlets. <clears throat> Look at that bone. That's a femur bone. That's one bone. This giant human femur was uncovered in Ohio in 2011. A turning point in the court case was when a 1.3 meter long human femur bone was shown as evidence in court of the existence of such giant human bones. The evidence came as a blow to the Smithsonian's lawyers as the bone had been stolen from the Smithsonian by one of their high-level curators in the mid-1930s who had kept the bone all his life and which admitted, ad, admitted on his deathbed in writing of the undercover operations of the Smithsonian. Wow. It's a terrible thing that's being done to the American people, he wrote in the letter. We are hiding the truth about the forefathers of humanity our ancestors, the giants who roamed the earth, as recalled in the Bible and ancient texts of the world. The U.S. Supreme Court 
has since forced the Smithsonian Institution to publicly release classified information about anything related to the destruction of evidence pertaining to the mound builder culture and to elements relative to human skeletons of greater height than usual. The public release of these documents will help archaeologists and historians to reevaluate current theories about human evolution and help its greater help us greater our understanding of the mound builder culture in America and around the world. Finally, after over a century of lies, the truth about our giant ancestors shall be revealed to the world. The documents are scheduled to be released in 2020 and the operation will be coordinated by an independent scientific organization to assure political neutrality. So there you go. Another cover up. <coughs> so we'll be we'll be following up on that when that happens. And then I have another interesting article that's related to climate change and earthquakes. <coughs> this is from Climate State. <coughs> A new study and it says enhanced seismic activity observed in Alaska due to climate change. This came out today, June the 6th, called Waking the Giant, Climate Forcing of Geological Hazards. Well, we know we see close to close to 100 earthquakes in Alaska every day of all magnitudes just on, on USGS. <clears throat> With news breaking that Alaska just had its warmest March to May on record with a statewide average temperature of 32.6 degrees Fahrenheit, that's 8.6 degrees Fahrenheit above the long-term average, the previous warmest spring in Alaska was in 2016 one must ask how this performs in relation to seismicity. First, we learned that according to the University of Alaska Fairbanks 2018 Year in Review, the year recorded the most earthquakes to date. Now, I've just started tracking earthquakes in last December. So this is important and it totally relates to what what we're doing and what we're reporting on every day. And this is from the Alaska Earthquake Center. We recorded more than 55,000 earthquakes in Alaska last year. We would give you an exact figure, but we're still counting. That's a record and not by a little. The previous high was 42,989 in 2017 which eclipsed 2014's record of 40,686. However, there was nothing extraordinary about 2017 seismically. The record was mainly due to the addition of 157 new U.S. array stations from 2014 to 2016, which help, helped us to detect far more earthquakes in previously uninstrumented parts of the state, especially in the north and west. So, this is a long paper. I will leave the link below. And then they, they're talking about climate change and protected projected potential for seismic response and 
let's see if we can get easier to read view over here I don't know if the charts will show up that they're talking about permafrost permafrost in Siberia and Alaska has started to thaw for the first time since it formed 11,000 years ago and has caused by the recent rise in temperature over the past six decades the melting rate of glaciers has become significantly higher causing a notice noticeable rise 0.19 meters in the sea level globally climate change can trigger catastrophes such as earthquakes volcanic eruptions tsunamis and landslides due to melting glaciers and rising in sea level the melting of glaciers driven by global warming warns us of a seismically turbulent future when glaciers melt the massive weight of the earth's crust reduces and the crust bounces back in what scientists call an isostatic rebound the process can reactivate faults and lift pressure on magma chambers that feed volcanoes hence increases seismic activity <clears throat> so that's what we're seeing and we're seeing it all over the place <clears throat> It seems that rise in re regional temperature due to global warming causing the glaciers to melt, which in turn depressurizing the underlying rocks, hence affecting the earth to rebound and faults to reactivate, therefore labeling the region seismically active with obvious increase in the frequency of volcanoes and earthquakes. And so we're going to be seeing this more and more, not only in Alaska, but over in Greenland and in the Atlantic Ocean with Iceland and Svalbard and those areas too. So I will leave the link below and so this just verifies everything that I've been saying and the reason that that I started reporting on earthquakes was because I felt like we needed to be watching them very closely on a day-by-day -day basis since since there was so much change of pressure on the plates and stuff with the melting and rearranging of the magma and things like that so it's not a theory anymore there's a huge amount of evidence for the clear relationship between climate change and earthquakes particularly in Scandinavia and North America at the transition from the last ice age the seismic response of ice unloading can clearly be seen in Alaska so there you go So this goes on. So let's see if there's anything else in the conclusion. And you know, as the Greenland glaciers are melting, then that's going to change a whole lot of that's going to release a lot of pressure off of that plate up there. So, I'd like to thank Climate State for that report. Now, speaking of earthquakes, let's move on over. We're done with that. <clears throat> We're looking at USGS for the last 24 hours for all magnitudes. We're seeing 329 here today. And of those, 24 are two and a half magnitude and higher. And we're seeing very few international, uh, just like two, three, three of these earthquakes are. Hang on, I've got to get the phone. 
Okay, I'm back. So I was saying, we're seeing only th really three earthquakes that are not part of United States territory. So that's highly unusual, you know, in this two and a half magnitude range. So let's start. Let's get going and dig in. So we're going to start down here in Mexico. There was one on land of 4.6 near San Pedro Hikayan, Mexico at 8.25 this morning. Now that's probably not big enough to do damage, but you would feel it. Then down here, a 4.4 near Nadoi Island, Fiji at 9 o'clock last night. Now this was deep, 460 kilometers deep. Remember, these deep ones cause movement of the tectonic plates around the planet. And then a 4.5 near Pagan, North Mariana Islands at 2.22 this morning, 180 kilometers deep. And that's all for the international earthquakes, which is stunning to me. It's, it's absolutely mind-blowing. So, look at all this. You can just see these clusters. There are so many, and they're all sizes, and we've got more in Oklahoma, and they're getting bigger. And so, I'm telling you, this is why I'm reporting on earthquakes every single day now. So, looking at Hawaii today, we have 18, so that's an uptick. So let's just look at them by area here. Here's a 2.8 Captain Cook. A 2.2 Waimea. Here's a 2.2 Hilo. Here's a couple in the ocean. Here's a 2.5 and a 1.9. Both of those are off the coast of Pahala. Then all of these are part of Kilauea. This is the crater of Kilauea, and these this is the flank of Kilauea. And remember, Kilauea is the earth is the volcano that collapsed, and you know it was it erupted for months last year. Uh, started in May of last year, and erupted for like I can't remember how long. It was months. It was erupting and fall, um, moving into the ocean and collapsing and now um, it hasn't stopped. I mean it's still things are still happening. So we've got 12 here today. So I will call these off 1.4 1.7 1.9 1.8 1.9 1.10 1.7, 1.9, 1.8, 1.8, and 2.5, and a 1.9. The 2.5 is the largest one, and that came in at 12.09 this afternoon. And all these times I'm giving you are Pacific times. <coughs> oh, and I'm feeling better. I was not feeling well the last couple of days. I was in a toxic environment on Tuesday and I always react bronchially in my throat and everything but um, I'm I'm recovering and I'm feeling much better today so thanks for hanging in there with me so I'll do my best to keep up with these on a daily basis even if I don't feel too great I'll I'll just I might sound a little squeaky some nights and have to clear my throat a little extra, but I'll, I will bring these to you as best I can. And now, in the Caribbean, look at this cluster here in the ocean. Look, it's in a triangle shape. We've got four right there. We've got a few on Puerto Rico, and then here's uh, here's a 3.6 on the Dominican Republic near 
guy Mate. So that's getting on up there. Here's a 3.8 in the ocean. And then here's a 3.4. So these are getting higher. 2.3, 2.4. Here's a 2.4. Now let's see how much these were. 2.5, 2.8, 2.6, and 2.6. So we're definitely seeing an uptick down here in the Caribbean. <coughs> now let's dig into Alaska since that article was talking about it. And oh, by the way, in the chart, when you look at it, they weren't looking, they were only looking at counting earthquakes that were two and a half magnitude and higher. And look at all of these that we see that are under two and a half magnitude. We have 98 on the map here today. 98. And of those, 98. There are eight that are two and a half magnitude or higher. So let's start with those. Here's a 4.5 near Atka. Here's a 3.8 near Kodiak. And a 2.9 near Kodiak. Those both came in together here. Those are recent. So 2.6 near Kodiak. Here's a 2.7 Haynes Junction. So 2.6 Anchorage, 2.7 Y, and a 2.6 at Kobuk. So Alaska is a seismically active area, and this whole um, island chain, the Aleutian Islands, it's all volcanic, and they move up. Um, Redoubt Volcano is over here. Old Ilyamna Volcano is here. There's sulfur dioxide being released. Pretty high numbers there right now. So <clears throat> it's an active area. Things are happening. Now when we zoom in on all magnitudes, we're seeing some little ones. And the little ones count. Remember? And look at this cluster over here. So here's a little one. Here's a 0.6 near Tanaga. And here's, how many are here? Five clustered here on ADAC. This is a volcano. This whole little island is a volcano. We can see the mountain right there. And then we just follow it up. Here's one uh, minus 0.6 at Dutch Harbor on Unalaska. Here's a 1.2 at False Pass. But the little ones show movement and activity. Now we're c coming up. Here's a 0.4 and a 1.8. Here's a 2.0 Kodiak Station. Here's the Cook Inlet. Readout Volcano is right in here. Old Yamna is right down here. So here's a 2.3 anchor point, 1.6 anchor point, uh, 1.7 Readout Volcano. So you know this when you when you got earthquakes and volcanoes together, you're gonna have stuff happen because they use the same resources. Look at all these today. We've got 39 here today. And see how they're spreading out and moving up. This is Anchorage here. So we see the movement spreading out. Moving across and moving out through this mountain range and moving up through the center of the state. And here's Koktovik. We've got six up here today. <clears throat> and we've got 11 at Kobuk and we've got one uh, 2.2 at 
Kotzebue. Kotzebue. It's fun to pronounce these names. So there's Alaska, and they average between 50 and 100 a day because it's a seismically active area and it's you know they've got tons of permafrost that's melting now and they've got issues with that they got problems because the infrastructure is breaking down you got oil pipelines up there running through the permafrost and the permafrost is melting so what if those pipelines break you got issues huge huge problems We have screwed around with Mother Nature way too long. All right, we're going to start here with this 2.4 near Metropolis, Illinois. This is in the New Madrid Hazard Zone. And uh, this came in at two, uh, 434 this afternoon. And that's pretty good size. And then we've got Oklahoma has 24 here today and of course Oklahoma has a lot of oil wells and they do a lot of fracking and everything but they've got a lot of flooding going on right now too and I'm thinking the weight of the water that's moving down with these floods is and the water can be seeping in to the drill holes the drill points and be causing movement and causing a shift and causing these earthquakes because everywhere they drill it creates a weak spot in the earth's crust. Look at this! Oh my god, this is at Moreland. Look at that. They're all piled up there. There's 12 right there. 1.9 that's the highest one right there at Moreland. That's insane. You never heard of earthquakes in Oklahoma when I was a kid. You never heard of it. Here's a 2.2 .2 at Blanchard. 2.0 Blanchard. Then we got another little cluster at Newcastle and Blanchard and then so on and so forth and then a 2.4 near Caldwell, Kansas but it's in Oklahoma 1.5 Perry 1.4 Guthrie 1.7 Prague 0.7 Stroud so it's it's an uptick what can I say we're seeing it happen Okay, moving on to the west, we've got a point nine at Beaver Dam, Arizona. And we've got um, a 1.6 and a 1.4 at Morgan, Utah. Then coming on up into the Yellowstone region. Here's, um, let's back out and see how many we, we've got in the area here today. We've got six here today, and we've got a quarry blast. Here's this point nine quarry blast near Virginia City, Montana. So now they're blasting there instead of Butte, Montana, and it came in at 11.44 this morning. So I'll just call these off. Point seven, Old Faithful Geyser. Point nine, Whitehall. 1.2 Lima, 0.9 Lincoln, and a 1.9 Lincoln. So that's still got activity going. And now up here, uh oh, look at this up in Canada. 2.2 .2 magnitude explosion near Princeton, Canada, 10:14 this morning. That's a huge explosion to make a, an earthquake like that. And then we've got 
a 1.0 magnitude explosion near Kalama, Washington, and a 1.4 explosion, same place. <clears throat> <clears throat> the second one was at 11.25 this morning, and the other one was at 1.35 this afternoon. Yeah, one wasn't enough. That's not too far from Mount St. Helens volcano. And here's a 0 .7 magnitude earthquake at Amboy, right at Mount St. Helens. That's it. That's the crater there. <clears throat> and here's a point one at Desert Air. So I have the trimmer map pulled up. And for yesterday, we only had twenty three in in twenty three trim trimmers trimmers. It's hard to say, twenty three trimmers. And so that's that's a little bit lower. So they centered to the west of Eugene, Oregon, and then down here. Why do it's so hard to read that? <coughs> okay, southwest of Roseburg again. Here's Klamath Falls. Here's Medford. Okay, Grants Pass is just to the northwest of Grants Pass. So that's where the tremors are. <clears throat> so here's Eugene. And then the others down here. Down here. I mean, look at that again. Okay, there's Medford, so it's northwest of Medford. Here's Medford, so it's up here where those tremors are going on. Now, coming on down into Northern California, here's a 2.0 off the coast of Petrolia, right on the San Andreas Fault Line in the ocean at 9.53 this morning. Then up here by Redding was a 1.6, calling it near Palo Cedro, California, at 3.32 this morning. And this is directly south of Shasta Lake that has a dam. Here's the dam. And we know that all these lakes are full. And by the way, by the way, there was an earthquake down by Chico this morning. And it was on the map, and it's not on the map now, but I had enough, I had my wits about me, and I took a picture of it. And here it is, Chico, here's the earthquake, and it was a 2.5, and it was southwest of Chico. Now here's Oroville, here's the Oroville Lake, here's the dam. Here's Thermalito and the Thermalito area. And so this was a good size earthquake, a 2.5 at 10.08 this morning. And I plugged in the coordinates on Google Earth. And this is where the earthquake happened. And this is where the Oroville Dam is. And it's less than 23 miles from the Oroville Dam and the lake. 22.91 miles. And that lake is full. It's going down a tiny bit, but they announced that they were not going to be using the spillway. So, so it's now off the map. So someone didn't want everyone to see that, but I took a picture of it. That was from today, June the 6th, at 10.08 this morning. And here's a picture from this morning. Here's the earthquake up by Redding, which is still on the map. 
Here's the one down by Chico that's gone now. Here's the geysers. And at that time, there were no, no other earthquakes up there by Reno or anything. And here's the earthquake by Redding, which I already showed, Palo Cedro. So I just think that's interesting to see, see these things. So let's go back. You know, I just wonder, it, I just, I don't wonder that much, you know, I, you know, there's just so much that's being hidden around this whole Chico area and Oroville and the whole thing is just, it just bothers me. All right, there's a point two near Truckee today. Here's a 1.1 on the northwest corner of Lake Tahoe. Here's a 1.1 near Stagecoach, Nevada, which is it's out in the desert. There's It's a mountainous area there. Um, it's, but it's, it's literally in the middle of nowhere. Here's a 1.1 at Hawthorne, so, you know, not many. I saw, okay, maybe that was yesterday, I saw a couple near Pyramid Lake. I can't remember. Okay, here's a 2.2 at Goldfield. And then a uh, 1.2 at Courant. Now let's look at Alamo. We've got seven here today. Uh, 2.1 is the highest. This one. This is near Area 51. Then we've got some more small ones down here. <coughs> Now let's go, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> get some tea. <coughs> this is the Mammoth Lakes area. <coughs> We're showing 10 here today in California. There low ones and under, but that's movement. And this is the Long Valley Caldera, which is a huge volcano. All this, most of California is volcanic. Here's 11 at Coso Junction in Cyril's Valley. 2.6 is the highest. That came in at 9.05 last night. Now, <clears throat> I didn't mean to go out that far. There's a 1.3 at Bodfish, 1.5 at Arvin. Down here on Baja, there's a 1.7 near Tapia. Here's a 1.1 near Progresso. And over here, we have continued event going on over here on the San Clemente Island. There were some here yesterday off the coast, and now we've got them on the island and then another one off the coast. So I'll call these off. Here's a 2.3 at the southern tip. This came in at 721 last night. Very shallow, one kilometer depth. Here's a 2.8 at 418 this morning. 3.5 at 425 this morning. 
and this 1.6 out in the ocean came in at 10.19 this morning. So I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. <clears throat> Look, one just came off the map. So in Southern California today, we're, we're going to count those at San Clemente and the ones down in Baja. We're showing 65 here today. So that's not as many as we've had in the last few days. Here's a 1.6 magnitude quarry blast near Holtville. <coughs> Here's this cluster at Kawea. We've got 15 in this viewing area. And then up here at Glen Avon is 30. So that's better than 100. That's going down. These are small. These are ones and under. Looks like 1.2 and so forth. Oh, I meant to share this article. Um, someone shared, I think they put it on my Facebook page um, in the comment about Los Angeles and oil, oil drilling in the Los Angeles basin. So it, this could be an area where they're drilling. Here's a 1.4 magnitude quarry blast near Lake Elsinore. Oh, look. Had a new one pop up. 1.5 Yucca Valley. It's exciting to see them just pop up like that. It's like, oh, there's another one. So let's see. What's 2.5 magnitude or higher down here? We got those. We got that. 2.6 Coso Junction. We got that. That's it. So even though these are little, they count. Showing movement. <clears throat> now let's come up to San Andreas Fault Line. 1.0 Pinnacles. 2.0 Trace Pinos. 1.0 Hollister. 1.8 Hollister. Point eight alum rock. Let's do this one up here. One point three Redwood Valley. And then at the geysers we've got thirty two here today. And these are ones and under. So that's about an average number. Why would they take that 2.5 off? You know, unless they just didn't want us to see it. But I saw it, and I took a picture of it. And from now on, every time I see an earthquake over there, I'm taking a picture of it as soon as I see it. Because it's probably going to go away. Here's a new uh, 2.9 Kodiak. 2.0 Kodiak. Alright. So I think that's a wrap for tonight. 3.8 Kodiak. I think we saw all of those. So I'll go ahead and sign off. And... I wish everybody peace, go in peace, that you have the strength and the wisdom to do whatever is required of you in these, in these final days and hours. So until next time, go in peace and God bless you, and I'll talk to you soon. Good night.